button. Okay, we are live on Facebook. Welcome everyone. My name is Yvette Brooks and I am the mayor for the city of Capitola. I have the honor of welcoming Kaiser Permanente to my mayor's town hall this evening. Thank you to everyone um, for being here this evening. Um, we will be learning about the updates of the pandemic and the status of Kaiser's work in our county. For those watching on Facebook, please remember that if you're asking questions or making comments on Facebook Live right now, we do not get to see them. No one is monitoring the, the comments there. So um, if you want to switch over to Zoom, please do so. And we'll be taking questions at the end of this um, evening's one hour uh, town hall series. So um, before we jump all in, let's start with um, my special guest here tonight from Kaiser. I have Irene Chavez, Senior Vice President and Area Leader, and Sam Bahaj, Chief Operating Officer. Let's welcome Irene and Sam. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Uh, Irene Chavez, and I am the hospital administrator, title officially a senior vice president, and the area manager for San Jose and Santa Cruz. And uh, I've been with Kaiser for 10 years, and I'm delighted to join you tonight. Excellent. Good. Good. Uh, actually, good evening, everyone. Right, because it's six o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is Sam Bajaj. I am the chief operating officer, and I have the pleasure of working uh, both with our San Jose as well as our Santa Cruz teams, and have been part of Santa Cruz since my time here in this role. I have been with Kaiser Permanente now for going on almost nine years, and had the opportunity to work in our uh, in our corporate offices in uh, in Oakland as well as in some other medical centers. Uh, within KP, and uh, we're excited to be here and, and excited to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for both being here. Um, did we have any other special guests from K? I'm I'm gonna just be cool with the lingo from KP. I mean, I heard you <laughs> throw that term around. Anyone else from KP here tonight? Th that works. We do have uh, Kelly Suto with us. Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself? You'll need to come off me. I am on me. Sorry about that. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Suto. I am the continuum administrator. Um, I, too, share Irene and Sam. Um, I work in both the San Jose and the Santa Cruz area. So my area of oversight includes all of the post-acute services for Kaiser Permanente members, which includes anything from skilled nursing, uh, home health hospice, uh, outpatient dialysis, transportation, uh, et cetera. So, uh, been with Kaiser. This is my 12th year with the organization. I absolutely love it, uh, primarily in the acute setting, and now have delved out into providing um, support in the post-acute services out in the community and absolutely loving it. Thank you, Mayor Brooks, and it's a um, pleasure to join this evening. Well, thank you for being here. So something really interesting, I, I, I shared this earlier before we went live. I attended um, Andrew Hill High School in San Jose, and it was a medical magnet school. And so mm -hmm. one of the great things we got to do was intern and volunteer in the hospitals. And Kaiser was actually one of the hospitals that I got to volunteer in. And they put me in every department. I saw so many interesting things. And I knew going at leaving that I could, could not stomach the things I saw in the emergency rooms or in podiatry or in all of those feel all of those things. And so, I mean, I know all of the work that our, our medical, uh, your medical teams do, and I'm so grateful um, for, for all of our essential workers and again, for your, your time this evening. So thank you all again. And so let's just dive in. I have a few questions lined up. Sam, why don't you t um, update us on what's been going on with the pandemic and what Kaiser Permanente has been doing to support our community. Yeah, sure, it'd be a pleasure to. So um, I just start with a little bit of a history. We are now going into our fifth year in Santa Cruz County and serving the residents there. Uh, it's, it's just been an absolute honor and uh, a great opportunity to be part of the fabric of the community there. 
Uh, and I must say the folks have embraced us open arms uh, from, you know, from the different health systems that are down there along with the community benefits organizations that we work with. Uh, with our response to the coronavirus, uh, as, as folks may know, San Jose, uh, particularly Santa Clara County, South Santa Clara County was disproportionately impacted starting March of last year. Uh, it, believe it or not, it's, it's been, it's been uh, uh, quite a bit of time since we've all been living in this reality. Um, we, have, uh, we did have a pretty robust response across our health system. Uh, a lot of it uh, with a new, uh, a lot of firsts, if you will, right? It's a novel virus that came across, unexpected, spread like wildfire. Uh, we had a lot of firsts in terms of learnings down here in San Jose that we were proudly able to help serve our patients. Uh, more importantly than that, we were proudly able to put these pieces of learnings together in what we call playbooks and share that with our regional team. What that allows us to do then is, you know, really leverage the power of being a system. So we get 39 hospitals, you had an opportunity for one hospital to have certain learnings, another one to have other learnings. These uh, these learnings got put together in, in uh, playbooks that were then sent out to the community uh, of hospitals that we have, the 39 hospitals, so they could have just as robust responses, even though they may not have been at that point uh, impacted the way we were in San Jose. Uh, one of the beneficiaries was uh, community benefit organizations as well as other healthcare organizations. Uh, one thing we are acutely aware in KP is, and we'd never take it for granted, is we've got 75 plus years of history. And we've got a deep, deep bench in terms of population care, uh, community health, and we take that honor and that responsibility very seriously. So one of the ways we give back and we service the community is besides the support that we provide in, in kind uh, or through grants, we do a lot of knowledge sharing. And one thing I'm particularly proud of as I shared is these, these uh, playbooks that we put together, we actually exported out and made it available to the state. We made it available to different hospitals across the state, across the state that, we are, are, that we have. Uh, anybody had access to it. And what that allows organizations that don't have the depth of history that we do, that don't have the expertise that we do, partly because, you know, they're, 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 they're not as large as us uh, or have, been, uh, have, has, have as long of a life as us, they can, they can take that and short circuit the learning process and really deploy it quickly, allow that, uh, allows that to protect not only their teams, but also service their patients. As folks come in, everything from infection prevention that we were able to uh, share with different school districts, for example. Uh, how, do you, how do you handle these, uh, how do you handle this virus and, and make the school safe for teachers and students coming back? Uh, those are some of the ways we, we served. A uh, couple other ways I'll just highlight Mayor Brooks, one is uh, part, partnering with, uh, with the different teams down in Santa Cruz, making sure that vaccine availability, COVID testing availability was as widespread as possible. Uh, a lot of it was, of course, hampered by supply chain issues that were global uh, beyond KP, but we rose to the challenge to do what we could, work with the state, work with other organizations, link arms with them to really help make sure that the response was as tight as it could be. Uh, and the last thing I'll share is uh, in addition to the knowledge sharing as well as the uh, response around testing and vaccinations, uh, another place where we really leaned in was making sure that we not only showed up, but other community benefits organizations had the opportunity to show up. So we supported them in terms of grants, and we've done that since the first day we've been here in, in, in Santa Cruz County. Yeah, no, I'm, I most certainly appreciate that. I was able to, um, Han, did such an excellent job of keeping us connected, keeping us elected, elected connected with mm -hmm. what was going on during the pandemic. And we felt very informed and I'm really grateful for building that relationship um, because it most certainly was a very scary time. Um, my other hat I wear is at the County Office of Education and it was just so nice to see the, the connectivity between the organization and, and the school district. So hats off to, to, to you guys. Um, so you mentioned you've been here for five years here uh, now. How have you grown um, as a healthcare organization and what can the community expect in terms of services that you provide now compared to before? Yeah, that's a great question. So for, for Santa Cruz County specifically, um, as I mentioned and you shared, we were going into our fifth year 
we've had a tremendous amount of learning and, and we get that with every community because every community is different, right? Healthcare is inherently local. Uh, when it's primary care, even some specialty care, people want to have that in their communities. They're willing to travel for some of the tertiary care because you want the specialized teams that do that. And that's really another way KP really leverage itself, right? Um, one example I'll give you is if you have pediatric cardiology needs, for example, we have specialized teams across our health system. So we don't do that work at every hospital. And, and that's intentional. That's by design. Because we want to make sure that we have the high level of volume that supports the high level of expertise that then supports the high level of outcomes. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's about patient experience and outcomes for us. So if, if somebody within Santa Cruz County has pediatric uh, cardiology or oncology needs, let's say, God forbid, they would get uh, sent over to some of our centers of excellence. Oakland's one of them. Uh, uh, Santa Clara is one of them. Uh, San Jose itself is one of them. If you have patibular issues, spine issues, that's where some of those that work gets done. And, and that kind of work not just comes from Santa Cruz County, all the other counties that we service that we are in within Northern California operate in the same model. Uh, so neurosurgery goes to Redwood City by design. And it comes from Santa Clara, even though it's one of our larger medical centers, including from San Jose and Santa Cruz. So we continue to leverage that. One benefit that provides back to the community and to, to employers is affordability. We don't replicate the costs over and over again because we're not replicating the same machinery. We're not replicating the same equipment or the same teams because there's a certain cost of maintaining that. So we're very mindful, and that's part of the design that we've, we've thought through in terms of how we design our delivery system. So to your question about how have things, how have things changed for KP, we've, thought, we've had to think through how do we provide good access, good quality, uh, good, good experience overall for folks within uh, Santa Cruz County and to do it in an affordable fashion, right? Um, I think one thing we've heard in, 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 you know, I've heard through community benefits organizations that I've connected with, we've made the environment more competitive. Um, Kaiser Permanente, by its, by its entry in the marketplace, if you look at the, the different kinds of plans that were offered five plus years ago, at the rates they were offered, and the different benefits that they offered, they're much more competitive now, and that's a direct response to KP's entry in the marketplace. Uh, that allows people to have choice, that allows people to have, pick the best plan for themselves and their families. And not just that, the plans are actually richer now. They cover more things than they typically did um, because uh, the, the marketplace wasn't necessarily as competitive before KP entered. And we think that's a net positive overall for the community. Uh, what we have learned in return is continuing to be mindful about the communities we serve. You know, we are inherent, we are very, um, uh, mindful and, and observe in the fact that North County has very different needs than South County. And that wasn't, you know, wasn't, COVID made that abundantly clear. But we knew that before and we operated that way. So our response and the way we reached out to different communities, because in the South, you have, uh, you know, communities that were very disproportionately impacted. They're, you know, uh, uh, minority communities largely, uh, agricultural. Even, even a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ag workers that were going from state to state, the dynamics are very different. The way you connect with them is different, uh, making sure that, uh, that you are speaking to them directly, not speaking at them. That's another piece that's, that we're mindful of as part of our, our delivery system. Um, and that is specific to Santa Cruz County. So we've been, we've been very thoughtful in terms of how we approach it uh, to make sure that uh, you know, when folks sign up with Kaiser Permanente, they feel connected individually to us as a health system. And, and likewise, we, we have that commitment towards them of making sure that we provide the services uh, in the fashion they expect and, and uh, provide it in an affordable fashion. Thank you. You know, I'm not here to, to tell everyone to sign up for Kaiser, but I grew up as a Kaiser baby. Like I said, I grew up in San Jose. And so I just remember being able to access care, everything in one building. And that was something when I moved here, I, I wasn't familiar, you know, it's, it's a bit different. And so yeah. that's something that definitely I, I recall. So no, I'm not to everyone viewing, I'm not pitching Kaiser <laughs> or saying, go sign up with Kaiser today, but um, that was something that definitely stayed in my mind for, for a while. Yeah, there's no better advertising. So thank you for that. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> isn't it? um, Irene, I saw you unmute. Did you want to add anything or were you just. 
Thank you, Mayor Brooks. I, I wanted to add to, uh, to Sam's um, great summary of where were we when we entered the market and where are we today? Um, there are two things that I think are um, noteworthy. One is the pairing of primary care with mental health. Um, we knew coming into the market that there was a significant need in mental health services, and we've continued to grow that pairing in order to create access because it's one of our fundamental pillars of, um, of, of a value proposition. And then the second thing is um, we were instrumental in introducing the community to telemedicine. So there isn't anything more remarkable than to be able to have that private conversation with a visual uh, with your physician on a phone call that has that visual component. And even better, when you're in the clinic and the primary care doctor says, here, let me get the dermatologist on the phone with us, and, and they pop up on the computer and they get to see your skin or your lesion or your particular need um, real time in the moment. Uh, it just opens up the world of telemedicine in a different way for our members. Thank you for allowing me to add those two components. Thank you. So Sam, I think we have a few slides this evening you were gonna share with us about um, the expansion of services, is that correct? Absolutely, happy to and excited to share this this project uh, more widely with you and the rest of the folks that are joining us this evening. So let me pull it up and let me know when you can see my slides. Okay, so can, we can see you see that. my screen? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, let me let me enlarge it just slightly so that's a good view. Um, so Mayor Brooks, this is the, th this project is uh, what we affectionately call the hub project within within KP. Um, just from an introduction perspective, you can find more information at uh, at the at the website address in the bottom right, 5940 SoCalAvenue.com. Um, that is the address of the location. Uh, this particular project, again, this going back to what I shared with you initially, right? Folks want primary care to be in their backyard. Uh, we've delivered on that commitment by having access points in the north uh, part of the county, downtown Santa Cruz, and a strong access point in the south in Watsonville Medical Office Building, paired with uh, mental health, as Irene uh, uh, pointed out. Uh, what, we, what we are now bringing forward uh, and this has been available in the community as well as within San Jose, but it hasn't been under the one roof uh, that you, you you so nicely pointed out, Mayor Brooks, with your experience. Um, this is a specialty medical office building. This is not just a, any old medical office building. This is the next generation. So from an investment perspective, when you talk about bringing in the best technology and the latest thinking, uh, this is it for KP. Uh, this will be this will be one of its uh, one of the first ones that we launch within the Northern California market within the California market uh, entirely. Um, it will be a, the, it's envisioned to be a specialty medical office building uh, where you will have a, a, a multi specialty group there. Uh, what you're seeing is an aerial shot of where this uh, where this particular project is proposed to be sitting relative to Highway One, uh, intentionally located in Mid County to allow for access from North County and South County. Again, we're mindful of the fact that uh, we all live in California and traffic is nobody's favorite thing. Um, and so we wanna make sure that, uh, that the, the distance folks have to travel is minimized as much as we can and it's as accessible as possible. So we intentionally chose this particular area, partly because of the land availability and partly because uh, it's, it's got a good uh, visibility off of the highway and accessibility off the highway. Um, I'll, I'll click through a couple of other uh, images to help bring this to life a little bit more. Uh, you can see particularly around this project, we've had a couple of uh, opportunities to engage the community around this, uh, that, that's around this partic particular proposed project a couple of times. Uh, that feedback point is important to us because again, 
nothing, nothing, uh, nothing is more important to us at the end of the day than being part and parcel of the fabric of the community, right? Um, we want to be viewed as part of the community and, and uh, earn that space alongside with the other organizations. Um, so this design is very intentional. We realize there is uh, there's a variety of different uh, uses in that area. There's homes, uh, you know, some longstanding longstanding communities. There's churches uh, down the street. Uh, there's also a sheriff's office next door. Um, so we've, as you can see from this particular shot, a good weaving of, or at least imagining of it, has greenery around it to help it um, blend a little bit more, right? So it, it doesn't stick out as a building. And you'll see that in the next, next shot a little bit better of the, the intentionality we've brought in to make sure that um, it, um, it it's nicely visible so that it's accessible for folks and quickly pointed out as people as people need access to it. But more importantly, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, right? The team is very mindful about that. Uh, I know I started complimenting you about the picture in your backdrop. One of my favorite things to bring forward, uh, and, and I'm super excited about this, is bringing local artists. So all our medical office buildings are outfitted by local artists. Uh, that's another way we bring the community in. Um, so I'm excited about, about the possibilities for this particular one uh, of how we bring in um, local, local artists from Santa Cruz, from Salinas, that area, to represent the history, the deep and rich history of that area, so that the, the community members that go in they not only are served by people who live in their community, because a lot of these folks will, they're also uh, it's surrounded by imagery that is appropriately attached to their community and their history. Um, this particular medical office building, and this next slide probably illustrates a little bit better, has, uh, you know, it's, it's got a couple of different stories to it. Uh, what it's supposed to uh, have is it'll have an ambulatory surgery center. It'll have procedural, uh, a procedural suite. Uh, it's expected to have urgent care as well, uh, as well as uh, uh, office-based uh, services that would provide it from different specialties. Um, what you can see is a parking garage noted, uh, noted next door. We know parking's an issue. We're mindful about that. Uh, so we, I'll speak a little bit to what we have done uh, from a parking and a traffic perspective. Uh, again, just giving a lot of thought to this as we bring this forward. Uh, you can see the top of the roof is entirely photovoltaic cells. That is to help this project is, is supposed to be uh, lined up to be a lead silver. Uh, what that means is from a sustainability perspective, one of the things KP is particularly proud of that I'm proud of, we're the first healthcare, uh, healthcare delivery system in the country that has gone carbon neutral. Uh, that's a huge thing, right? We all want to make sure we support our environment and support our communities. Um, and that these are the small steps that we take. Everything from the greenery that you see um, down from the plant that we put into the ground, so that it doesn't take too much water, right? But still brings you into the into the building, still brings you into something that's warm and healing. To what you're seeing on the rooftops, as you would see if you came to San Jose, Santa Clara, any of our medical campuses, including this proposed campus, is uh, is renewable energy. We're generating a lot of our energy. We're using natural gas in, in places uh, to, again, reduce our carbon, uh, carbon footprint. And hopefully at some point, you maybe even go carbon positive versus carbon neutral. Um, what you see from the parking building as well, parking garage, uh, particularly on the front end, is this sort of this uh, image of a wave, right? Again, it brings Santa Cruz imagery into it. Uh, it pays homage to what the community, the community that we're being, uh, we're looking to be a part of uh, for for many many years to come. Um, from from a um, overall building perspective, uh, and, and a traffic perspective, because I'm sure those questions are going to come up, and maybe you already have them in, coming up in your queue. Uh, so I'll, maybe I'll speak to one of them, and I'll pause to see if there's other questions that you have. Uh, I'm sure traffic is a big concern, right? Traffic is a big concern for us. Um, the member experience begins from the time you decide you want an appointment to the time you leave the office and you get home. So how easy we make it for you to get an appointment, how easy we make for you to get to your appointment, whether it's video, like uh, Irene mentioned, on your phone or on your laptop, uh, phone if you so choose to do that, or if you want to come in. If you want to come in, you want to be able to get parking easily, you want to be able to get access easily, you want to be able to get to your appointment in a timely fashion, be seen in a timely fashion, and then exit in a timely fashion. 
Uh, one other um, piece that KP brings together is, um, and this plays out in parking, is because we have all things under one roof, you're not making multiple visits, right? You go see your specialist. You can go downstairs to the pharmacy, and by the time you get there, the, the order's already been sent. You fill your uh, prescription. You may even stop for a lab draw. And that's all organized and orchestrated so that it can all be done in the same visit so, uh, if you so choose. You may choose to get uh, uh, x-ray services uh, or any other services. Um, what that means is unlike the outside world where you would come to your physician for a visit and you'd get back in the car and you'd drive down to go get your lab drawn from uh, another company or then you get in the car and you drive down and you go to the pharmacy with it CVS or otherwise and you get in your car again, you drive down and go um, get your radiology services, right? You don't need, you don't have all those vehicle miles traveled. Those those miles you're putting on your car on the road in the car, uh, clogging up the the roadways. This is one visit. Uh, it can be all done within one visit. So that plays certainly into our into our thinking and design. The other aspect is we've talked a lot about mitigation at, uh, opportunities, working with the city, working with the county. How do we uh, uh, connect to um, bus lines? How do we work with um, how do we work with uh, making it accessible from a biking perspective? We know biking is a big thing out in out in Santa Cruz. So how do we make that available to you? Uh, how do we make sure even our team members have the ability to do ride sharing, right? So that not everybody's driving a car coming in. Um, you know, if you're coming from South County, maybe you can carpool with somebody. So we've got you know everything from in, you know when you walk when you park, the first few spots are are designated only for carpools. Right, but nobody else can park in it. Make it easy for them. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we intentionally put a lot of thought and design into to make sure that um, whatever project we bring forward is not just great for us, but it's great for the community and it's sustainable for the area. So I'll pause there and see what other questions you might have. No, well, thank you. That was most super informative. Um, congratulations on. Um, on the carbon neutrality, that's really important. We have our own climate action program here in the city of Capitola that we're, we're aspiring to, to meet the state guidelines, if not sooner as well. Um, how tall, how many stories is this building I'm looking at? It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's uh, the, the parking garage is about five stories. Um, okay. And the building itself, it's a little bit hard to tell from this angle, but the left-hand side is about three, the right-hand side is about four. Um, so if you could if you could envision it that way, that's that's sort of what it's expected to be. And has this conceptual design gone for, for folks here um, in the city of Capitola, this particular design or project is not within our city's limits. It's in, um, in the county, mm -hmm. so unincorporated. Has the conceptual design gone to the county yet for review or feedback? Yeah, no, a good question. So it's, it's in the process going through entitlements. Uh, we expect it to clear uh, and be available for public input and review shortly. And of course, we'll, we'll go through the process that the state requires and the county requires of making sure that it has all the impacts assessed appropriately for this particular project. Uh, we do understand it's a large project, and it's probably one of the largest that Santa Cruz County has seen in a while. Uh, we're particularly excited about that because I think what that means is, you know, it's more medical services, accessible a little bit faster than what typically would be, in one space, under one roof, and uh, lots of jobs attached to it. Well, I, I don't know if it's going to be as big as the the project at the mall, but we shall see. Um, the you mentioned community engaging with the community. Has there uh -huh. what's what's the timeline for for us to see that and um, what we should expect to see after entitlements? Yeah, no, great question. So um, after entitlements, there's a period of time where uh, by statute they're required to allow for public comment. Uh, we are certainly going to, and we, so let me explain a little bit about what we've done so far and then what, what's coming forward. What we've done so far is we've had a couple of different opportunities to have open, open houses, if you will. Uh, one was at the Simpkins Family Center, another one that we uh, hosted uh, elsewhere, where we invited folks from the community, particularly the ones that I mentioned that live around us. Uh, within within the, the definitions, and I don't have the exact number in my mind, but 
um, there's a, within certain few hundred feet of a project, you, you're, you're required to invite folks to come in. We've doubled that, right? Because we wanted to make sure we took as many voices as we can as uh, invited to come in to be able to opine and give us their thoughts on the front end. Um, they live in this area. We want to make sure that this continues to be a, uh, a place of pride for them, a place they want to continue to live. And, and uh, my hope is this becomes their choice of medical provider, right? That's, that's, our, that's our ultimate goal. Um, what we've also done is since then PMB, which is the name you see at the bottom left, that's the, that's the organization that's really working to uh, bring this through entitlements as, as, uh, as a company. And then KP has uh, expressed interest in, in taking over the space and building what you're seeing in front of you uh, once it goes through all that, all that entire process. So PMB is the one that's bringing this project forward. They are taking. They have had a, a, a like dozens and dozens of uh, community meetings. What I mean by that that they've reached out to different groups, everything from church groups to engaging different civic groups to elected officials. Some of that is information sharing to make them aware of the project, so they're aware of what's you know whether it's in their backyard or or maybe not even you know maybe up the street from them. Um, make them aware of what the project is expected to do. Um, so that they're informed, so that they're informed for their constituents, so should their constituents have questions. Um, so they've hosted a variety of these conversations. Uh, we expect to continue that and, in fact, continue to add to that as this goes into public comment period. Uh, we're, we're open to recommendations and suggestions where, you know, we feel like this is the best vision that we're putting forward. It's the strongest after taking into account a variety of impacts, everything from, you know, water impact to uh, energy use impact to traffic impact, right? Uh, some of the things that are near and dear to, uh, near and dear to our hearts. Um, so we've taken all those pieces of impact, uh, all those impacts into account, and uh, we will continue to listen with an open mind and an open heart, uh, because at the end of the day, again, our goal is to bring this project, uh, project to fruition, because we think at the end of the day, it's a net positive for everybody. And, and can you expand on, on that net positivity for us a little bit more? You know, you talked about traffic, you talked about, yeah. um, we've seen a, a new need develop over the last year due to the pandemic, but what kind of data can you share about um, where your members are currently getting healthcare to help us show how this proposed project could possibly alleviate um, the traffic and, and fill the actual needs of our community members? Yeah, no, we've uh, you know we've we've uh, gone through and done a pretty thorough analysis of that, and in fact, we had to revisit it a little bit because of COVID, right? The one thing, as Irene mentioned, COVID's done is uh, from from two ends. One is it's accelerated virtual care from a provider perspective. The 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 physicians have are uh, you know physicians in general have become more open and receptive to deploying and using virtual care in more creative ways than they would have uh, pre-COVID, right? Um, you know, it's probably collapsed 15, 20 years, in fact, of, of, uh, of what would have taken us to get to that happened in, in 12, 14 months. The other piece, and equally important, is it has changed the mindset of the consumer. Patients now are more willing to engage uh, and get their care in, in different ways. Again, there's different forms of virtual. It could be a phone call uh, or it could be a video, right? Uh, and, and as Irene mentioned, one of, one of the things that we have uh, been fortunate with as a health system is we've got a pretty strong uh, technological backbone. Uh, you know, we, we've, we were one of the few organizations on the front end in terms of deploying an electronic medical record uh, you know, years and years ago. Um, and we've deployed that across the whole system. Uh, similarly, we were one of the few health systems that brought forward video visits pretty early, uh, at, you know, years and years ago. That technology now has matured, and that's allowed us to provide an exceptional experience. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried it. I've, I've tried it, and I've actually seen it in action on the physician end as well. Um, it, it operates, uh, you know, very nicely. Um, and, it, and like I said, the technology is mature to allow for that great experience that folks would have. Um, what that does is you're not traveling anymore, right? One of the biggest things you mentioned is traffic. You're not coming into the medical office anymore if you need to. In fact, yesterday, I sent a secure message to my primary care physician, who is about five miles from my house, 
and I sent him a picture of something in the back of my neck, right? So it's a skin, uh, skin thing. He looked at the picture and I just said, hey, can you take a look at this? Let me know what you think. I've attached a picture because within the app, it allows me to take a picture and attach it. And it's secure. It goes to him, or in this case, it's a he, so it went to him. He took a look at it. Within an hour, he responded back. He said, I think you need some steroids, a topical steroid. What do you think about that? Now, I appreciate he asked the questions or just telling me I needed a topical steroid. Um, so I said, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. Um, can you have it sent to me? And within 20 minutes, he responded back by saying, done. I ordered it. It's going to be in the mail. It should be at your house within X number of days. Um, I love that, right? I didn't, I didn't have to even call him or talk to him. I didn't even have to go in, um, even though it's not that far from my house. Uh, I think those kinds of conveniences, as people get more acclimated, uh, will get, will get better. What that allows us to do then is when we look at the traffic impact from this particular facility, it looks very different uh, post COVID than it did pre COVID. Even pre COVID, we were pretty proud to bring this project forward. Uh, because of the way we had thought through of everything under one roof, right? You have less number of visits that you're having. Uh, now with, with post-COVID, um, we have more people willing to not uh, want to necessarily travel um, and, and physicians being able to deliver care in a certain way. So that gets removed. There's another piece to this, which is the, the way the state measures vehicle miles traveled. Uh, I've actually got some information here from our, um, from, from our team at PMB in terms of what this project does to, uh, from a traffic perspective. So we've done a four-year traffic study. Uh, what I'll share with you, and, and this will be you know, part of the uh, EIR that we bring forward, the, the environmental review. Um, you know, we're looking at things such as extending the bike road network, stoplights, street improvements to help with traffic flow. Um, again, making sure that it's easily accessible. Uh, it doesn't cause frustration for, for the residents. It doesn't cause frustrations for people visiting for care. Uh, there's also been reduction of vehicle might traveled of thousands of trips per day uh, based on our calculation. Uh, and the other piece would be the specialty would be local, right? So I mentioned to you earlier, there's certain things we want to intentionally keep in our centers of excellence. That won't change. And I don't think, I don't think patients want that to change, right? You want to go to the best when you, you want to go to the team that does it all the time and does it exquisitely well when it's your child or somebody else or something really serious, right? Everything else you, you're willing to travel a little bit for. Now, um, this medical office building, what this medical office building does is some of the services that we were getting through community providers, right? So some of the contractor specialists that we'd use in the community, we will now be using Kaiser Permanente physicians. Some of the services that they may have chosen to go over on the hill, because you know we do have people that work in San Jose but live in Santa Cruz in Scotts Valley or otherwise. Um, they can actually, instead of doing it on their way to work or way back from work, they can do it on the weekend now because it's right here. They don't have to go over the hill uh, or, or through uh, the, the, the great drive of Highway 17. Um, people from South County who would have to then come up through Gilroy and come that way or come to the, to the medical center in San Jose for certain services, uh, if they so choose, they would just need to travel, travel to Mid-County Again, trying to make sure we place this in a fashion that's accessible to uh, as many folks as possible. So I think what we'll find net net to your point uh, to your question was uh, we're going to retain a lot more tr uh, a lot more visits within the community, um, and uh, that does not preclude people from choosing to go elsewhere. Right? That's the great thing about KP. If you're traveling up to Oakland, for example, because you're, you you've got some business out there. You can stop by our Oakland offices. You, you don't need to come back to your home base down here in Santa Cruz to get services. Um, so it doesn't preclude you from still going over the hill for work and stopping in San Jose and getting a blood draw there if you want to. Well, I'm really happy to hear it's not the x-ray behind you that you had a visit send the picture of. I thought you broke your arm or something like that. <laughs> Um, and also, my six-year-old walked by when you were talking about looking for local artists, and she just whispered, he didn't say Capitola because I want to submit my art, and she's six. So <laughs> I'm just letting you know, you, you, have, to, you have to make sure you are, you're inclusive of all ages when you do that. 
We um, certainly will. When we do pediatrics, I think that that makes sense. Right. She's got tons. <laughs> it's all over the house. Um, so I can only imagine that uh, there will be lots of new job opportunities um, at Kaiser as you continue to expand. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what we can expect from that and whether you'll be hiring locally or making or, you know, setting that as a priority of, of Kaiser? No, that, thanks for that question. That's a great question. So a couple of ways I'll answer that. One is from a project perspective, right? We, um, we will be working with local uh, teams for this build. That's one way in terms of jobs when you're talking about, uh, you know, from, from the local carpenters union to, you know, the bricklayers. We've got a proud history of working with labor. We intend to continue that. PMB is aware of that. So as part of this project, uh, we intend to continue that tradition. So uh, that that this large size of a project in and of itself will bring that vitality, that economic vitality uh, to Santa Cruz County and allow the different trades the opportunity to be able to uh, to partner with the builders and, and, and deliver on this project and have a hand in it. Um, the, the other place, that, that'll show up is uh, employment within the medical offices, right? So one of the things I'm particularly proud of is when you look at our current footprint, which is uh, Scotts Valley, downtown Santa Cruz, Wattsville medical office buildings. Uh, most of our physicians live in the community. Um, most of our team members are from the community uh, or they used to drive all the way to Santa Clara and work there, and now they're glad we're in the community, so now they don't have to drive all the way there. So they actually drive to one of the medical office buildings. We've actually quite a few of those folks, uh, stories that I've heard of people who've uh, relocated their work and are happy to be uh, uh, going to KP still, but close, way closer to home. Uh, another place where we expect to bring uh, net new jobs is, we think it's probably gonna be in the vicinity about 300 plus when this is uh, fully up and running. Uh, again, that'll be part of our, it is part of our application process, so that information will be transparently available to folks as well. A uh, variety of different settings, medical assistants, lab lab assistants, nursing, um, physicians, right? We'll have to, we'll have to recruit physicians. Um, to the extent that we don't have the specialists locally or uh, we aren't able to pull locally, we'll bring folks in. Uh, that was one of the things I think when we launched in Santa Cruz County five years ago, it's a, it's a, top of mind for every community that we've gone into where they say, okay, are you gonna to add to it? Or are you gonna draw from it? Um, our answer is both, right? We use local and then we also add to it. Uh, so this project will be no different. Uh, what I'll point out to you, Mayor Brooks, is when you look at the research and the, um, uh, the American Medical Association actually has a pretty good um, um, research that they did, I think it was 2019, 2018, 2019. It's posted on their website. So if you Google uh, AMA or American Medical Association, and you add the keywords um, uh, local impact or uh, hiring, right? Um, what you'll find is this, it's a pretty exhaustive 50 state review that they did that what happens when you hire one physician, what's the number of people that get added to support that physician, and then what does that generate in terms of local taxes? What can you expect that to generate in terms of um, local economic impact, right? Because uh, just like auto back in, you know, when we looked at when uh, the auto industry was in trouble, it wasn't Detroit just was in trouble. It was Cleveland that was in trouble too because all the suppliers that, that provide everything from the transmissions to the brake pads, they don't necessarily live, they don't work, they don't build in Cleveland. I mean, they don't build in Detroit, they were building out of Cleveland. Uh, so you saw the downstream impact is not just the first degree of jobs, it's the, it's the second, third, fourth, fifth degree of jobs. So they've done that economic analysis and said, you know, everything from hiring a physician that leads the restaurant down the street to hire two additional uh, servers, for example, right? And one wash, uh, one dishwasher. They've gone through that analysis and done that. So it's pretty, it's open and available to the public. I encourage folks to take a look at it. Uh, it's from the Medical, Me Medical Association, uh, nothing that we've had anything to do with. So you can see what that potential impact can be to the community of Santa Cruz County. Again, we talked about 300 jobs. What I'll tell you at the end of the day is uh, generally, um, this is true and it has been true so far. So I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope it continues to stay true. So I don't, so I don't become a liar. Um, when there's a boom or there's a bust, 
there's one industry that continues to grow year after year. It's healthcare. It provides steady jobs. It provides high paying livable wages, right? Uh, and these are all labor positions, by the way. So uh, we work with our labor partners to make sure that uh, they're represented just as well, whether it's nursing or it's medical assistance. Um, so, so I think, you know, when I look at this project, that's one of the things I'm particularly proud of is not just the 300 folks plus families that will be impacted from this. It's the local, uh, you know, shop that they go, body shop that they go to because now they've got a little more money in their pocket uh, or the local uh, restaurant that they go to or the coffee shop or wherever, however they spend their, their dollars. They've got more disposable income that then goes and feeds the community in so many different ways. Well, you are speaking my love language because <laughs> one thing that I really believe in, um, something that actually Councilwoman Martine Watkins brought forward in Santa Cruz City is the health in all policies. So when, as an elected like myself, creates policy, we look at the whole person and how that policy would affect not just the the you know the body of that person but their their minds and, and the mm -hmm. whole the family their children and so um you spelling out that the trickle effect of what well-paying jobs means for for community members is is right on point with that so i appreciate that so very much well we are running out of time i could talk to you all all night Irene, Kelly, Sam, do you want to add anything before we go out for questions for the last few minutes? Mayor Brooks, if you would allow me to just add two quick um, components. One is that our presence here, we hope to inspire the youth to select healthcare related jobs. And then the second is we have a member patient advisory council that uh, creates a social network for our members to give impact directly on how we're doing and what things we could do differently to uh, create a better experience for them. And this would be a location for them to meet and socialize and give us input at the same time. Thank you for allowing me to add those two elements. Thank you. If um, Han or someone wouldn't mind emailing me more on the the committee that would or the council, that'd be so great for me to share with our constituents when the time comes. Um, okay, I know we have a lot more viewers on Facebook, but right here in Zoom, we have a couple of people. But if you're interested in asking a question, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Generally, folks are really shy. Okay. Um, I see a hand raised with Mr. Brett Garrett. You have a couple minutes here if you'd like to ask your question. Oh, sure. Um, let's see. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, Mr. Bajaj, I'm very happy to hear your enthusiasm for traffic reduction. And mm -hmm. I've been advocating for a public transit project that you might be able to see in my profile there, uh, very similar to what's happening in Contra Costa County that could potentially serve your location directly and reduce the amount of parking needed. Um, so this might be a long shot, but I'm wondering if anyone would be willing to talk about, you know, probably later after this call, about how to redirect some dollars from the parking lot into transit that would serve it. And I, I am willing to show my face, so I'll do that. <laughs> Mr. Garrett, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm, I'm from Chicago. We don't have the same traffic issues as California, but I've, I've come to love traffic in, in the last nine years I've been here. So I'm, I'm with you um, in terms of nobody wanting to increase density in their area so that it just exponentially adds to traffic. We're always willing to listen. Uh, I'll tell you that right off the bat. So uh, I'll have I'll have my team reach out to you, um, and we can also share with you what we have done so far. Uh, and you can probably expect a lot more of that coming through the draft environmental review that should be released shortly. Um, it's a dialogue, right? We're happy to we're happy to take in um, uh, recommendations that you have, suggestions that you have, and we'll see where that fits in. 
great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank. I don't know how to get my contact information to you. Or do you have it? I don't know. Mr. Garrett, I can. Um, I'm sure you can find me pretty easily on the City of Capitola's website, and then I can I can connect you to the right folks to start that conversation. Wonderful. Thanks, Mayor Brooks. Thank Absolutely. you, Mayor Brooks. Thank you for your question, Mr. Garrett. Okay, well, that is all of the time we have for tonight. I just want to again thank you, Irene and Sam and Kelly and Han for helping me put this on together or putting this on this evening. Excuse me, if you can hear those giggles in the background, I'm so sorry, they're so <laughs> loud. <laughs> um, so I'm fully embarrassed now, sorry. Um, so uh, thank you all this evening for being here. My next uh, mayor's town hall is on June 17th with the four mayors. Um, for those who are who don't know, I've been meeting with the four mayors um, of, in the Santa Cruz County informally, and we have some fun things to announce about what we've been working on, and um, we'll be answering constituents' questions about what to expect as we move forward from the pandemic. Um, we're looking for the right terminology of what to call this. You know, we're moving forward, we're moving out of, um, we're just moving the heck away from this pandemic, I hope. Um, and that's the goal. So have a wonderful night, everyone. Um, and thanks again, Sam, Kelly, and Irene and Han for being here tonight. Good night. Good night. Thank you for hosting us.